morning. morning. Yeah. Here we go. First, I want to uh, thank everybody for whatever it is that you've done to help create the atmosphere, the consciousness through which we will be blessed. I want to thank my guest speaker, the Holy Spirit, who speaks through me. You see, we have a relationship. Whenever I'm standing in this office, this position, I have an understanding that I completely surrender my mind to it. Of course, the miracles helped me to develop this relationship with it. I have no problem of going in and out in exchange of sometimes calling it him. Um, but of course, the miracles teaches us that it is the manifestation of that expression that we called Jesus that is now uh, expressing in humanity as the voice not of God, but for God. And um, for all who will welcome it and ask it for help, it gives but it's not offended by others who don't or won't. So I'm feeling a little funny. <laughs> yeah. The topic is giving and receiving are not the same. We're just concluding four weeks of a six-week experience on Thursday nights here in our mental equivalence class. Some of you may be present who are in that class by Zoom. And um, what we're studying is the law of mental equivalence. So this energy is coming out of that because as I bring a message on giving and receiving in the Consciousness is this is Thanksgiving season and Thanksgiving week and Thanksgiving celebration. You are benefiting from the four weeks that they experience and uh, the fifth week that we are about to go into. And you are, if you're in that class, uh, experiencing a preview of Thursday's session on mental equivalent and the way you benefit is by tapping into that consciousness and leaving here with, which is the goal of today's talk, establishing a new mental equivalent on giving, thanksgiving, but higher than that, a new mental equivalent of generosity. You leave here changed. And um, in your practice or a sense of giving, and this is not limited to the church, but just in life in general, you'll have a whole different understanding, well, more than that, meaning behind your giving, no matter what it is that you give or how you give, and this is not limited to money, you know, but whatever it is that you give, the meaning behind it will be changed. And, and, and the result of that, the product of that, you know, you'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll be kind of like me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You're looking at somebody who practices what they preach, especially in this sense of uh, generosity and, and, and demonstrating prosperity. You know, prosperity is relevant to each. You know, some person may 
live in a box like this and this and this and, 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 and whatever, don't have a lot of mean uh, stuff, they're prosperous, happy, at peace. That's what I mean, at my level, at my level of mental equivalency, at my level of living, I'm all right. But there's a reason behind it, and it's what I'm talking about. It is because of what I do, not just what I say and teach. I do what I teach. Now, I am not a tither, but I teach tithing. That's not duplicity, that's not hypocritical, that's whatever. But tithing to me, uh, I you became, once I, when I was a child, that thing. But when I was no longer a child, I could look back and see that tithing was good for me. Because it was a training wheels. Well, I took off them doggone training wheels. And I don't keep track of what I give, not only to God, but just life in general. And as a result, that's the way it comes back. You know, that's the way it comes back. I want you to leave with that feeling. Even if you are already a tither and you give beyond that, I'm talking to you. Because I want to help you to expand your cup in which you receive back from a new level of understanding. Um, of course, the miracles teaches that there are 10 characteristics of God's teachers. I'm not going to go through any of them in <laughs> detail. I just want to tell you about the two of them that this lesson is based on. The first characteristic of God's teachers that teaches is trust. And the seventh one is generosity. But it says generosity, like all of the other characteristics of, of, of God's teachers, rests on ultimately trust. Generosity rests on trust. And so then I will be asking you um, a question. You know, are you fulfilled? Are you demonstrating prosperity in the sense of having all your needs met, whatever it is, and you're at peace with that? And not only do you have that, but you have some to share and some to spare. That's me. If not, where is the problem? The problem is in lack of trust. And the problem is in not, is that you're in, not in that consciousness, consciousness of generosity. And that's where the healing needs to be. Um, are you indebted? Think about it. We're having a slow, slow can we talk session here. Are you beholding? Are you obligated? Are you thinking about it? What if not you, your cousins? Let's think about them for a minute. We can, we can get in touch with this when we get out of ourselves and think about your cousins and all those people who are always, you know, you always need, need a hand and you're helping. In terms of your, the, the, let's talk about them. And when, of course, the miracle says, when I am healed, I am not healed alone. So they can be healed while you're sitting here getting your healing for them. Are you in these high interest situations and credit cards and all that kind of See, there's a reason for that. That's your mental equivalent that we're learning on Thursdays, right? And so you have to shift and change to a new mental equivalent. Um, Eric Butterworth, the, the author of the book um, In the Flow of Life, says that he talks about how it is that churches, unfortunately, and perhaps unintentionally, teach giving and tithing, but they do so from the uh, standpoint of the needs of the church. You need to run it, need budget. And, and, and he says, that's legal, that's all right. However, there's a need to teach it from the principle the principle of giving. And, 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 and that causes a shift in the consciousness of the people. I'm going to, uh, that's my 
teaching here is not what the church needs at all. It's what you need and why you need to give, not just money. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says, in case there's anybody here who's concerned and worried about supply, about money, about stuff, about whatever it is that you know, I don't care if it's a car, if it's a house, if it's money, if it's stuff, if it's a relationship, if it, whatever it is, if you are worried, if you ain't got it, if you're without it and lacking, there's a reason. And, and so let's go to Sunday school here and get your Bibles out and turn, turn. Oh, get your Bibles out. Well, anyway, Matthew chapter 6, <laughs> verse 25 said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It says, uh, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. It means chill out. Don't worry. But you know, if you're not a giver, you can't practice this. If you're out of integrity, and this is not with God, first with yourself, you know what you're doing wrong. You know what you're not doing. You know, you know. And this is where, where the block flow. The title of Eric's Butterworth's, Eric Butterworth's book is uh, The Flow of Life. In the flow of life. See, you're out of the flow of life when you're not integrity with your own spirit. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. They don't work for stuff. Uh, they don't save, hoard, gather into barns. Yet your father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? You're much better than that. And look what he does for them. But you know what the difference is between them and me? I ain't talking about you. Is that they don't think. See, we can think. And that's where our problem is. You know, we can think. We can think. And so we were, that's why we were talking about mental equivalence. That you need to think and change your thinking. But see... What we, 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 we don't realize that this change in thinking, we want to do it by meditation. We want to need to be by prayer. We, don't, we need to do it by sitting in the silence. And we want to need to by putting on our, our robes. Putting on our robes and our badges and putting our credentials on the wall. Then, no, this is an action thing. It's by what you do. It's what you do. It's what you are doing. Okay. Uh, well, um, um, your clock up there, somebody messes with it when you're talking. As it goes. So, <laughs> to, <laughs> So how do you receive and how do you accept is what we're talking about. How do you receive and how do you accept? And it's by consciousness. It's by a mental state of being. It's by a mental state of mind. And that mental state of mind is a state of gratitude. I live in and from a state of gratitude, but I have worked on it, I have built it. And I'm talking to people here who are like me in that same place, but our meaning behind it could be a little different. And our expectations behind it could be a little different. And our understanding behind it is what I'm coming to talk about. And what this gratitude itself is, recognition and appreciation. 
gratitude is. Gratitude is not just a little a simple word just to fill in to make a sentence complete. You know, it's, it is in itself gratitude. Gratitude is active, not just a word. It is active. Gratitude is recognition, and gratitude is, is acceptance. But the way it is um, processed is through giving. And, and so there's a little nuance here that you want to look for. We say this stuff is caught, not taught. This stuff is caught, by the way, you see me turn these pages because I had written um, my outline line up. This is the third time. The first two times were at Sister's house yesterday and last night. And the third time is in the back room. I was in there rewriting it. Woo! Gratitude, come on, let's get into understanding what gratitude is. Gratitude is, is mo it's a feeling, it's an attitude, but it comes with action. It is demonstrated. It, it, it's doing something, and it's, you know, there's a tangible part. There's an outer expression that matches, corresponds to the inner. And what it does, gratitude, it stirs up something in you. And, and, and it generates something in you. And that's something that it stirs up and generates. It's called Thanksgiving. It's called Thanksgiving. But let me tell you something. This Thanksgiving is an action. No, I give thanks. It ain't no mouth thing. Thanksgiving is an action thing. Thanksgiving is that action that you give for, for what is in the unseen. Let's put it, let me tell you how Jesus did it. Uh, Lord, come, because my, uh, my brother, the one who you love, is uh, uh, dying. And he said, uh, okay, and he waited four days so that he could make sure that when he did what he did, they wouldn't say the man was in a coma. They want to know that, yeah, he was dead. Uh-huh. And when he got there, you know, he had built a mental equivalent before he went. He had gotten up there, you know, transcended the thought of death and so forth and that life can die and all that stuff. And so, Thanksgiving is a state of mind. He got that mental equivalency of thanksgiving. He passed recognition and unification and realization and went straight to thanksgiving. See? And, and, and so when he walked up there in front of the tomb, he said, Lord, I thank you. That was the prayer. But see, he was in that mental equipment. He was in that state of mind. He gave thanks before what he had already seen. He had seen the man coming out of the tomb, and he gave thanks for. But he had built the mental equivalent, you see. And so that's the attitude from which I live. Ooh. But 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 it's working because of what I have done, the seeds that I planted, yes. the, 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 the following, the, the decrees, and so forth and so on. Not out of obligation, not out of fear, not out of, you know, nothing, not from the old law consciousness, but the new law consciousness, N not because, you know, I don't want to do the wrong thing because I'm just doing the right thing. It's because of trust. Trust in the Lord. Malachi 3.10. Since we're in Sunday school, you got your Bibles open and turn to Malachi 3. And I'm going to read through it, and after that, we're going to close with uh, a PowerPoint. Don't put it up yet, because they'll be reading that, not listening to me here. That, that'll be my close. This ain't going to take a long time. 
because it's it's there's a feeling here that I am uh, infusing in you and awaking in you. There is a relationship that I'm helping you to establish with a this divine energy. See, that's God, but we we're looking at it now at this divine energy that surrounds us and that we are immersed in and that penetrates and interpenetrates and flows through us. There's a relationship that you leave here with. I got it. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of demonstrations through me that has happened because of this consciousness that I'm talking about. Malachi chapter. So, so we're talking about giving and receiving, right? And, and do you see that? There, that uh, the, the, the one on the faucet and the cup? Is it behind me and it's over there and there? Look at that faucet. The faucet and the cup. In the Buddhist tradition, they have uh, a teaching, a system, uh, an idea that's called the koan, K-O-A-N. It's kind of comparable to our parable. Uh, but the koan is uh, a system where you teach the students by asking a question. But it's a question to, uh, 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 by which the, there's no right or wrong answer. And, and so it asks the question, when you take the cup to the faucet and the water flows into the cup, uh, is, 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 is the cup receiving or giving? Is the cup receiving or giving? And so you have to ponder that and let the answer be provoked from within you. There's no right or wrong answer, but it's something to think about. And it's telling you that giving and receiving are two ends of the same thing. But you see, there's a divine energy here that we are immersed in, and it is activated by trust. And we're receiving and, 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 and um, accepting through this action called giving. The cup is giving the faucet the opportunity to allow this water to flow through it into the cup. Without the cup, you know, the, 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 the water's not going to, well, let's get it up for that and come back here. I am that faucet, right? And that water is that divine energy that we're immersed in, that is everywhere present. And that divine energy is activated by my cup when I bring it to it. And my cup is my belief. My cup is my trust. My cup is my faith. Now, how big is my cup? is going to determine of how much I'm receiving and how big is it, how much trust do I have, how much faith do I have. But you see, something can constrict that trust and that faith, and that's by what I'm not doing, as give, and that's the giving. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh huh. And, and how much I give, what I give, and what I give, give is, 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 is springing out of my trust and my faith. Oh, ye of little faith. See what I'm saying? This is something you don't talk. You, you walk. You don't, you, 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 you gotta walk to walk. You can't just talk to talk. Let's think about the Buddhist monk while we're on Buddhism. And what the monks do, you know, is that you, you ever heard, you know about the beggars? That's okay. Beggars. They go among they go among the beggars. They don't go to the rich people for money, the monks, the priests. They go among the beggars. Um, they're the beggars, the poor people, the beggars. Why? Right there. They go among the poor, the monks do. To try to turn on the faucet. To get them to give of their nothing. They find something to give, but it turns on the faucet. It turns on the faucet. 
It turns, and their lives are changed. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing here. They are not returning. They are not, they are not returning, the beggars are, are not returning from which is being given them. They don't feel they have anything to give. They don't know how to give. The flow is blocked. Malachi 3.10 puts it this way. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return. Well, the return means you already received something. You don't return. You already received the water. You've already received the divine energy, but you're not giving back. But you ask, but you ask, and this is God talking in the Old Testament here in his rhetorical question, but, but, but you ask, how are, how are we to return? Don't even know. How are we to return? How are we robbing you in tithes and offerings? The response was, you are under a curse. A curse simply means that you are restricting the flow. You are restricting the flow. I can't give you what I want to give you because you're blocking the flow. You got unclaimed property up here. She said, in my father's house are many mansions. There are many rooms. You got rooms of cars and houses and relationships and food and supply and all of that, but I can't flow into you because you're restricting the flow. That's what robbing means. In tithes and offerings. Test me in this, it says. And see. That's what I did when I first came into this teaching. I heard about it. I said, let me test it and see. But see, where I was, I was a part of a big church congregation, their guardian church in Los Angeles, where it was, I mean, it was happening in the 80s. And, and people would get there three services a day. They was rushing there. It would seat about 300 people. But people, we had to do three services because when, when Dr. Dan was teaching, people were sitting all around the floor everywhere trying to get a seat. And then they had overflow the TV room, overflow, overflow, overflow. But I was just coming in, you know. And this stuff looked good to me, smelled good, and it tasted good. And I started applying it and demonstrating, and I was popping and hopping. I was demonstrating, you know, like everybody else was sitting there talking about it, and I was doing it. There was a lot of jealousy and stuff and care and all, you know, but, but anyway. But I was, I was practicing this. Test, I was saying, test this or this or this or this. Test me and see if I will not open floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Well, I was popping and hopping, but one time I had gotten so hot, I had income streams coming from different places. I was a practitioner. I was working as an assistant to the minister. I was up on the pulpit with him, and I was doing all kinds of stuff in my office. I was an assistant administrator with him, and they got, so our offices were next door to each other. And, he, and, and one Sunday, I was sitting there with him. We'd go downstairs and go into the pulpit at a certain time, and and when I got up to join him to go out to church, I, I wrote my check out for my tithes for that Sunday. And um, I had, it was for $50, like some of your cousins do. And they, you know they done earned more than, 50, more than $500. That's 10% of 55. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But not $5,000 for the month, but for that period, that for that time for me to write on the tithe of current just received should have been $500. But I wrote a check for $50. So I got up. As soon as I got up, something hit me. I felt convicted because of what I know. Because of, I was out of integrity with my own. See, God wasn't doing nothing to me. It was my own consciousness. And I said, oh, Lord. So I sat down and, and I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, make me a cheerful giver. That's all I said. 
Now, that's 30 years ago, but I remember it. Then a sense of peace came over. So I wrote another check for $500 of the recent, most current amount of money that had come to me. And I know that was a right because I was a tither. So went on down. And at the end of the service, you know, the practice was that there were about three people sitting on the, on, on the podium all the time. And so we would file off and walk down, you know, while people are standing going out to the exit. And here I am, I'm leaving, you know, behind whatever position I'm in. And right about here, there was a sister reaching over to me trying to grab my hand. So I just grabbed it, you know, and come, here's a piece of paper in my hand. So I'm thinking that that happens all the time. You know, I just, <laughs> I told you I was hopping and bumping. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, here we go again. So I was going to look at the number when I got home. So, <laughs> so what happened was, when I did, I wasn't in a hurry to open it, you know, because I was wondering, how am I going to deal with this? So what happened when I did open it, it was a check for $500. A check for $500. Now, I ask you, when did she write that check? At what point did she write that check? My spirit told me when you wrote yours. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, 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 so we can withhold. You robbed. How have you robbed me in tithes and offerings? So you robbed yourself. You robbed yourself. So when you give, do you give wherever you give? Not to church, only the church, but if you give it to other people. Are you giving out of some sense of wanting something back? No, 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 no. You can't do that. In kind, I give you this, I'm expecting that. No, 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 no. That's not the kind of giving that you want to be. I don't give like that. Or you want some special treatment, some special recognition. You know, you want your name on the seat, the name is, hey, that's Old Testament stuff. That's old school stuff. That's where, from where you came from, not here. Giving and receiving here is, un see, see, see that, 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 that water which symbolizes divine energy is unconditional mind. Unconditional mind that needs a conduit. It needs an instrument to flow through and it's activated by your trust and your trust is, 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 is demonstrated and the symbol of your trust and your faith is what you give. That's symbolic. So the $500 is a symbol. It's a symbolic outer expression of a consciousness of trust. And so what happens is that then it, 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 it activates that divine energy and it flows in my cup, expands more and more, expands more and more, expands more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's messing with the clock, so let me give you a couple of demonstrations. What happened was, was this. I think it's just some, I don't know the years, I'm it's somewhere around 1990, 91, 92, 92, I was living in Oakland. I had just served as my relationship with East Bay Church of Religious Science. I had uh, accepted their request that I be a minister of the church for a year. They wanted me for a minister, but I, I wasn't, my cloth wasn't about to be a minister of a church. It's just speaking in churches and supporting churches and so forth, but not to be a pastor. And so I did my uh, uh, understanding with them for a year, but after then, I just, I'm from Long Beach, so I decided just to hang around in Oakland for a while. And I lived here for four or five years, something like that. And, and while I was here, uh, I decided to buy a house. And that I wanted a house, not to buy a house, that I wanted a house. But I was a tither. I was a giver. I, 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 I was practicing this consciousness of generosity and wasn't doing bad. And so what happened is that I was working with a group, I think was started with A Course in Miracles. Reverend Andriette was in it. And um, when I was working with this group, I decided 
that let's have in Booker Dykes, I don't know if you, any, any of you remember him, he was a part of it. And I said to Booker, I said he was in, he worked for Wells Fargo, I think, but he was in New People. So I said, let's put together a people, a, a group to uh, 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 put together people who are related to real estate, whoever they are, to help people understand the process of buying homes. And, and we did so. I'm talking fast. And um, in this meeting, when we started this group, was your sister. And when we were talking to Sharon, she said, well, I'm here because I want to sell my house. <laughs> I said, girl, that's my house. I had never seen it. And so we left the meeting, and the next day, the next day I went and looked at the house, and within a few weeks, I'm in the house. And from the house, the purchase of the house, somehow I'm paying cash for a new van. I'm just telling you how this stuff works. And fast forward a couple of years that I lived in the house, I, did, I wanted to move back to Long Beach. What it says here, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. And there's something else here it says, I can't read my right. And, 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 and stuff. You know, it gives you protection. So, 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 so this is what tithing and offering will do. Let's put it this way. You, when, when you, you have insurance, right, on your car and your house and whatever, whatever, and when you haven't paid your insurance or never gotten it or whatever, you're always in fear and trepidation and you're careful, you know, and you're looking over your shoulders because you don't have insurance. Well, that's the same way it works with this stuff here. But this is called assurance, not insurance. See, 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 when you're in integrity with your own spirit and your relationship with God, you have the assurance of faith. And ain't nothing going to happen to you. But as soon as you don't have that insurance, that's, that's when somebody's going to hit you. That's when the house going to burn down. That's when the tornado going to tear your stuff up. You know, because you don't have insurance. But the people who have, do have insurance, it goes right over and that's the way the assurance of faith and trust in God works. And all your needs are met before you are even aware of the need. Whatever comes up is that how to do it is already taken in, taken, is in place. So when I got ready to leave Oakland, I wanted to sell the house. But it was during the time when the market was upside down or whatever they call it, and the houses are sky high and the interest, and nothing is moving. So somebody told me, well, you know, you're going to have a hard time selling that house, but see, yeah, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm a peculiar individual with a peculiar relationship with my father. I do what he tells me to do when it comes to this stuff in this area of my life. So what I did, I went to the hardware store and got me a sign that says for sale. Then I went and I'm following spirit and I painted the house, I had the house painted a peculiar color. Aqua and yellow. Is that strange? I don't know why I was doing it. But I, and then I did a little groundwork, the landscape, and put rocks and stuff there. And here I am in the middle of putting a sign on the door. When houses are not moving, a man drives up and gets out of the car, comes in. He said, I can sell this house in a week. And I started laughing. I started laughing. He started laughing. That's called the holy laughter. <laughs> I started laughing. He started laughing. And in a few days, the man brought somebody to buy the house. See, that's the assurance of faith. That's, see, I'm taking my cup. I'm taking my cup to the faucet. You see, and I'm expecting... I'm expecting the water to flow. I'm expecting that, that divine energy flow, and it comes out in the form of your needs met, whatever it is. That's the way it works. Now, I told y'all this is the close. I ain't, I ain't lying. This is the last one. Let's go, to, let's go to Long Beach. Here I am in Long Beach now, moved back. I raised four children. The oldest one is 40-something. The other one's 29, and the other one was 24, whatever. But anyway, here... Here I am, I got three other monkeys in my house. 
And my grandma, my, my mother is sick now, and she needs to be taken care of. I need to take care of her. But where I live, you know, um, this ain't the right place for her. She can kick upstairs and, you know, so I wanted a house. I've, the three houses that I've owned, I've never gone looking for one of them. They come to me and everything else. So here's what happened. What happened was I get a call from Pat Penny. I'm saying this because we're on Zoom and some of the people back home are looking at this. And they've heard this story over and they go, oh, here he go again, telling that story again. Yeah, I'm telling it again, y'all. So what happened was, what did she do? I get a call from Pat. Pat, so she was a ranking real estate person in the Baldwin Hills, View Park area of Los Angeles. And she didn't service Long Beach uh, that way. And she called, she said, I'm on, I want you to go look at this house, write this address down. So I write the address down. And I go look at the house, because she knew that I, uh, my mother had, uh, was going to join me. And I didn't think the house would be large enough for all of us. But I went on in anyway. The lock was under there. But when I got to the tract, my niece lived in the cul-de-sac around, right in the same tract where my niece lived. My mother and her were like this. And she was the one who supported me with my mother. See how God set that thing up? She was the one who supported me with my mother. Here God and I planted a house. Right. So I go in the house and magnificent. I mean, it was big enough for it. Everybody got a room. You get a room. You get a room. You get a room. <laughs> and, 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 and the house was owned by a couple, young couple, who had gone in and upgrade. All the upgrades are done. He had contracted cancer and left fast. But she wanted to get out of that house in a hurry. So I moved into the house. Pat said, go ahead and move in. The house had not closed escrow. I said, I called her husband. I said, Roland, Pat, he said, Pat's crazy. Go ahead. She knows what she's doing. Moved into the house. And so what happened was, I'm in the house, right? I asked Pat, I'm in the house. She never said anything about no money. Pat, how much money are you going to? She said, did I ask you anything about money? Do you hear what I'm saying? Mental equivalent. That's what we're talking about, mental equivalent. And we're talking about, but it's because I live from a consciousness of generosity. I give and I don't tithe. I don't be keeping track of what I'm giving God because I don't want God to be keeping track of what he's giving me. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? And the church is not the only thing that I give to. You know, I'm looking for opportunities. I'm always in an expression of giving and giving and giving and giving. When I moved into the house, the interest rate, I think, was something like 7%, but the, the, uh, it was upside down. It was when none of, the, none of those periods where houses are not being sold and interest rates are high like it is now, you know, these cycles. And when I got into the house, the house was $2,300 at that time, which was 15, 20 years ago. At like now, it was a lot of money, but it was more money then than it is now. You know how it goes. And so what happened was, now, I'm, I got four kids. I got my mother. I got this, 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 this. Uh, the banks were obligated to help people who were in compromised situations to handle their, I, I'm not using the right language, but you know what I'm talking about. And so I, they had these long lines at these centers for people to go into the bank for their to, to adjust. Da, 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 da. And I went through one and it didn't work. And I said, uh, I went back a second time. When I went back the second time, I got a person who was interviewing me, and she was letting me, she gave me a wink, wink <laughs> on what not to do. And what not to do was, see, my monthly payments had never been late. Credit score is good. Not over obligated. It. Well, you don't qualify. You don't need it. You understand what I'm saying? If you know, you've not, if you're paying your bills and da -da -da, it was not for you, it's for people over here who, who are not able to do that. So she gave me a wink, wink. So for the next three months, I didn't pay no car, no house notes. 
and I didn't pay no bills. And then I let the credit score drop. And then I went back, approved. So my car note, my house payment went from 2300 to 1300 Do you know what I'm saying? So what, why did I tell you my personal business? I wouldn't be telling that. Well, I don't care. God's good to me. I just, I'm just getting more blessings. Do not hide your thing under the candle of the bush. You know what I'm saying? I'm just nervous because of the time. So what happened was, that's all. This stuff works. <laughs> you crazy. This, this stuff works. You see, and that's what I mean by giving and receiving. It's based on trust, on faith. And your trust and faith is your action of giving. And so it is.